A new classification for Singapore's public housing from the second half of next year. Standard, plus and prime, which come with varying conditions. Here's a quick recap. The new category, plus. Now that's for flats within each region nearer to MRT stations and town centres and come with more subsidies. A caveat, longer minimum occupation period or MOP of 10 years and owners will have to pay back some of the subsidy at resale. They also can't rent out the whole flat. The income ceiling for resale buyers is $14,000. Now the second category, prime flats, that is for flats in the city and also the greater southern waterfront and so come with the tightest restrictions including also a 10-year MOP. Owners must pay back the most subsidies at resale and they can't rent out the whole flat either. The income ceiling for resale buyers, $14,000 for families and $7,000 for singles. Our standard flats will be available island-wide, forming the bulk of BTO supply. Owners get to enjoy regular subsidies with a five-year MOP. No income ceiling for resale buyers. A CNA's Genevieve Wu spoke to Senior Minister of State for National Development, Tan Kiat Hao, earlier, and he tells us whether he foresees a price surge in prime and plus areas when owners want to sell their flats. These are questions naturally on people's mind. This is a different framework from the BTO framework that we are familiar with today, mm. mature, non-mature. Now you have standard, plus and prime. <laughs> yes. So naturally people are asking, so what is this framework about and what does it mean to me mm. as this existing homeowner or someone who's planning to buy a flat? Mm. So maybe you answer those questions, but maybe you take a step back and ask the important question as well to set a context to understand these issues. Why are we doing so? Mm. Why are we doing so? During the National Day Rally, Prime Minister has also laid out three objectives mm. of this new framework. And in fact, these three objectives are uh, actually have received broad consensus. Mm. We had a, um, a large-scale dialogue with uh, Singaporeans as part of the housing conversation as part of Forward Singapore. We do that on a regular basis, but we did a large-scale one recently, 16,000 people, mm. and they gave different views, different people from different walks of life, different family circumstances, mm. different needs, different aspirations. Mm. But three broad consensus objectives. One, HDB continue to provide good quality, affordable housing mm. for Singaporeans. Secondly, to have a good mix in our estates. Mm. And thirdly, fairness and equity across Singaporeans, across generations. Mm. And that's the reason why we are putting out this framework, Standard, Plus and Prime, to support this ambition moving forward. Okay, so back to your point, Standard, Plus and Prime. Do you expect some confusion over the new classification? And how is the Ministry helping, I suppose, mm. to communicate this? Well, for standard flats, actually, this is uh, basically the BTO flats that we are all very familiar with. Okay. It's a really current set of BTO projects, sure. right? Five-year MOPs, subsidies. But moving forward, looking at Singapore's development, actually, many parts of Singapore is very well developed. Mm. The mature, non-mature framework may not be relevant moving forward. Okay. And actually, you find that actually more of the BTOs will be in good locations around the centre of Singapore and also very close to good amenities mm. in what we now know as mature estates. Mm. And for those choicier locations, certainly in property you say location, 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 yes. Yes. means that they will naturally be cost more, price mm. higher. Mm -hmm. How do we make sure those flats are still remain accessible to a large number of Singaporeans? and to have a good mix within the estates. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we have to provide more subsidies for those flats. And because of more subsidies, to be fair, we will have tighter restrictions. Okay. So these are your plus and plus flats in the region. And for the choices of choices, locations, very good locations, these are the prime flats. Okay. So that's how I would uh, think about it. Standard, plus and prime. Standard are the flats that we are familiar with. Plus flats, choice locations within mm. a region, mm. close to good amenities, good location attributes, very desirable, and prime flat, the choices of all. Okay, got it. So let's look at some of the new rules, right? So resale uh, of the plus flats and just like the prime flats mm. will be sold only to Singaporeans, right? Mm. Uh, can you explain the intention behind this and how does it um, sync with the ethnic integration policy? Mm. 
So I think it goes back to the three objectives um, and how does these conditions meet the three objectives. Mm. One, you mentioned about the longer uh, minimum occupancy period, mm -hmm. the MOP of 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I can understand some Singaporeans say, you know, 10 years is not a short period of time. <laughs> a lot of things in the family can change, a lot of things in life can change. I'm not very sure 10 years is something for me. I understand. And this is the reason why we try to strike a, a right balance between owner occupancy Mm. and as well as to meet the three objectives we talk about. Higher subsidies, but to be fair. Mm. And we look at HDB's data, actually majority of Singaporeans actually stay in their flats more than 10 years before they sell. Mm. Secondly, when we discuss this idea with many of the participants as part of the housing conversation, there was broad-based support. So when we talk about the resale conditions of MOP, talking about the Singaporean nexus, it's really back down to three objectives of keeping flats affordable, mm -hmm. good mix, not just of the first buyer, but also subsequent buyers of the flat, a good mix within the estate mm -hmm. and a sense of fairness. Okay, let me take you up on your point of the minimum occupation period. So we're talking about 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Would you, the, the government consider special waivers mm -hmm. Uh, meaning uh, special groups, for example, seniors, mm. to sell this earlier, mm. because like you said, 10 years is not mm. short. We're talking about seniors, for example. Well, the way I would think about it is that, um, uh, firstly, when someone decides to buy a flat, and a part of the decision point, look at standard, plus and prime, and mm -hmm. the r different requirements and uh, 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 eligibility conditions that are tied to different categories, there are actually many options. Okay. The framework will be launched second half of next year. Okay. And even when we launch it, the standard flats, as you earlier mentioned, are the current BTO flats will be the bulk of these launches. Mm. Right? And there are many more uh, resale flats, 1.1 million existing HDB flats who do not come under the new framework. Mm. We, do, we are not retrospectively applying them. So there are options for someone's buying. At the same time, we understand that 10 years may result in, you know, of some people do have some experimenting circumstances, right. changes in family, changes in life. Mm -hmm. The assurance that HDB gives to these families that we look at such cases on a one case by case basis, okay. look at individual circumstances, and we take a look at that. Okay, all right, that's good. Um, let's look at uh, singles. That's another group of people we're looking at, right? So, with the change in housing policy for singles, they are now able to buy flats and across all these three. Mm. Uh, uh, categories and um, why do we still then seek the need to 35 <laughs> before mm. being allowed to buy say a two-room flat? Mm. We've been uh, also have speaking to many singles as part of a housing conversation mm. bringing them in hearing their views. Uh, the first observation I will make is that uh, singles are not a homogeneous group. Okay. Right. They are younger seniors, perhaps just starting out <laughs> in the workplace, <laughs> wanting their own place on their own to be independent. There are also seniors who are a bit older, a bit more settled, but want to live near parents to take care of family, mm -hmm. maybe older parents. And so singles have uh, different needs, different aspirations, different wants. And over the years, the government has been listening closely to singles, hearing them, understanding them, and trying their best to meet everyone's needs and aspirations as well. Mm -hmm. Over decades, we've been refining our policy. Actually, most recently in 2013, we allowed singles to buy BTO, Mm -hmm. directly from HDB in non-mature estates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we saw over the years up the grants eligible, that is uh, eligibility grants for uh, singles. Mm -hmm. And in even last year, we increased the quota that we give uh, for singles in terms mm -hmm. of flat set aside. Mm -hmm. So we'll be updating our policy. In this move, I think many singles actually appreciate that we allow singles now to buy two-room flexi flats across the different categories, standard, plus and prime. And now they actually can live near the parents who may live in mature estates. Okay. So they appreciate it. And my assurance to singers is that we are continuing this conversation. In fact, there are many interesting ideas that come out of the conversation. Rent to own models, co-living mm -hmm. models, mm -hmm. or intergenerational living models. Mm -hmm. And we are continuing this conversation with singers and trying to find ways of meeting their needs. But they understand. The government is also in a very difficult position, mm. having to balance the needs of different communities in Singapore. Mm. And in Lenska, Singapore, it's always a big challenge. Sure. All right, Mr Tan, that's the time we have for now. But thank you so much for adding more to this conversation. Thanks for joining so us. So, Jeremy, if, if I could just uh, end off by saying that this is a big move that we are making mm. to continue to ensure that HDB flats remain affordable and good quality, mm. ensuring that we continue to have a good mix in our estates and assure a fair system for all Singaporeans. Oh. It's a big move in this direction and hope that uh, Singaporeans can take time to understand the, the framework and also reach out to us if any questions or qu queries.